I'm in. Hackers. To do the work that they do, to pull off the things that they pull off, hackers have to hide their identity. Can you imagine compromising the security of a company or government and stealing from them or sabotaging them if in doing so you just handed your name over to them? It's like showing up at a car lot in your street clothes without a mask on, walking up to a salesperson saying, hi, my name's Lenny, pulling out a hammer and smashing every windshield you can before they stop you. You just wouldn't do that, and nor would any hacker concerned with ever hacking again. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today Waste Time asks the question, how do hackers stay anonymous? So the root of this question comes from a fairly intelligent assumption. Let's look to mobile phones for a simple framing of the question. When your phone connects to its network, it doesn't really matter what you do with the phone, it's sending a request to the network to do that. The network receives that request, and depending on what it's asking, may relay the request to another piece of the network. And this goes back and forth on and on between you, an antenna, a satellite, another antenna, and an almost endless amount of machinery, but your phone identifies itself throughout the whole process. It has a serial number, an IMEI number, and a MAC address number. The network knows it's you, and it knows it's your phone. Otherwise, you'd probably get other people's calls, and that would be weird. No, I don't know an Ernie, and you are... You're Ernie. Oh, why are you trying to call someone named Ernie? You're trying to call your other cell phone. Why would you ask if I'm you? Oh, Ernie, don't call me again. Anyway, the network has to track you, your SIM card, and your phone, because it has to send data specifically to you. So why is this different for a computer? Well, it's not actually a whole lot different, except you don't have a cell tower, you have an ISP. But you do still send all of your requests to one specific place, which relays them to the next specific place that needs to be contacted to continue the chain. So how could a hacker possibly be safe in a situation where pretty much every bit of information they have has to start by passing through the place that they pay for internet access from? I mean, assuming that they haven't hacked into the internet access that they are using. Your ISP can and does keep a log of most actions that you take through their network. Has to keep track of your data usage in case you have a cap, which is a dick move on their part, but still, they do it. Well, if they keep track of that, why can't they keep track of everything? I mean, if you're making the assumption that they aren't, I would maybe go ahead and read the privacy policy of your ISP. They may not sell the data to anybody, but the data's there. Also, they may sell the data to people. Just because they have a privacy policy doesn't mean they don't do that. But technically, they've got a record of every keystroke you make, everything that you send their way. You make a request to some weird porn site, they have to give you that weird porn site, and that's associated with your IP address, whether you like it or not. It's there. Somewhere, it's there. However, that doesn't mean it actually matters to them. You see, an ISP doesn't give a crap. They're there to take your money and give you the internet. They have no incentive to... To effectively police your usage, it would cost them a lot of money. They would essentially have to have people reading logs, and logs are gobbledygook in the first place, but the sheer amount of it would be staggering. On top of that, logs that ISPs keep are not necessarily complete records of everything that you do, otherwise they would have way more data than they could ever have any idea what to do with. And I'm talking strictly on a storage level, let alone a digestibility level. So on that level, you're probably not going to get in trouble. However, your ISP does not own all of the computers in the world. All it does is just connect you to all the computers in the world. Other people have much more specific things on their computers and are able to watch them a little more effectively. For instance, if you torrent a movie and the movie company happens to have access to that torrent too, and they do, they could, in theory, get your IP out of the seeding list, and while they wouldn't have your name, they could contact your ISP and say this IP address downloaded our movie. We take issue with this and you need to send them a warning. At this point, those logs stop being gobbledygook because they're looking for a specific thing. An automated system can easily check a log to find out whether you were serving a file from an IP address, and if that IP address is associated with you, it's a pretty clear match. It's understood that you were doing that. But even if that stuff isn't kept in a log, and a lot of the time it's not, assuming the IP address mentioned in whatever notice a company sends your ISP has been tied to you, they just make the assumption that it was pretty open and shut, that's what you were doing. So let's say you weren't just trying to steal a movie. Let's say you were trying to steal insider secrets. Ooh. It doesn't really matter whether you want to make a stock purchase or 
reverse engineer some patented tech, you really don't want your identity associated with that. You don't get a slap on the wrist for it. You either get a company, or the government, or both, throwing the book at you. The first method of anonymizing themselves a hacker might use is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. A VPN is essentially a middleman that keeps your information private, does not log it in any way, shape, or form, and acts as a front for you. A VPN essentially acts like your friend in high school who delivered the anonymous notes to your crush. What's different here, though, is that you're looking to crush your enemies. On the target systems, it simply looks like a connection from the VPN provider. The VPN provider does any actions that you may be asking of it on your behalf and gives you the results. Now, because this is computers, it happens over microseconds, but in a manner of speaking, essentially sets up a link in the chain that will cut itself if asked who's on the other end of the chain. I mean, in theory, it could cave and tell them who you are. It could give up your IP at any given time, but the whole point is that they won't. Essentially, the only time a VPN would do that is when they can't get out of it in any way, legally speaking. But then again, you could hack them. Anyway, generally, a VPN will have a type of client which encrypts the data that you're sending out to send over your ISP, and the VPN receives the encrypted data, decrypts it, and then executes any of the instructions. Essentially, this makes it so that your ISP, even if they were logging you rigorously and in depth, would have no idea what you're doing. In order to decrypt data, one would need a decryption key, and ISPs don't have time to sit around generating those brute force and hitting your data with them. On top of that, the key could change at literally any time, and often does. A VPN may have quite a few different reasons that you would want to use it, a lot of them extremely legitimate. For instance, you may work for a company that handles secure data and only wants you to connect through it to their computers. This allows them to, with certainty, know exactly who is in their network. Virtual private networks are actually a pretty big business and offer a pretty large degree of safety and privacy. But let's say you really want to be secure on a level of, hey, most governments couldn't track this if they wanted to. That's where Tor comes in. Tor stands for the onion router, and that has nothing to do with anything other than onions have layers and ogres also have layers and web browsing. So essentially the Tor network is a lot like a torrent, at least in how you would explain it. Lots of computers decentralize a network for requests and information transmission. When one sends a request, it goes into the Tor network, hits a random node, then another random node, and repeats until it hits an exit node. The exit node is the computer that makes the actual outside request or touch point with the outside world. In essence, it acts as a randomizer or a tumbler. If you can imagine your request being essentially a ping pong ball in a lottery machine, that's essentially what's being done with your data. Except for your request will eventually quote unquote win the lottery, it's just who knows who gets it. The way the Tor network works, everything is encrypted and randomized in a manner that makes it essentially impossible to track. So if you connect to Tor through a VPN, you're hiding what data that you're sending and receiving from your ISP, hiding your identity behind a company whose main point is to hide your identity, and then randomizing your traffic through a series of thousands upon thousands of nodes. Now that may sound easy, but in reality it's not. It does take some learning in order to be able to do any of this stuff. Most lay people do not even understand the concepts. You do now. You're welcome, by the way. But one has to learn how to set all of this up as well. And if it sounds like an absolute guarantee that you'll never be identified, it's not. There's no such thing as a system that is unexploitable. The idea is to make a system that is so not worth the effort that people just won't put the effort into it. If properly set up, going through a VPN and Tor essentially makes it not worth it to try to find you. But if you're extra paranoid, you could buy a brand new computer, never use it on any of your own networks or fill out any of your own information into it, and connect to public Wi-Fi with it, and then into a VPN using Tor. Make sense? I hope it did. So what do you use the internet for that you've been searching for this? <laughs> Let's hear about it in the comments. I'm interested in, in why this information is relevant to you. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. And if you're not subscribed to Waste Time, now is a very good time to do so, because we upload brand new videos all the time, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. We well, thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, here on Waste Time.